orientation. Hello, my name is Cheyenne Stewart and I'll be commentating on my presentation of the eclectic theory uh, for developmental psychology. An eclectic theory is an approach that does not follow any one particular developmental theory, but rather uses the best points and features from each theory. Um, so where that saying is holds true, um, one size doesn't fit all, and that is so true when it comes to development. Um, each human's different. Uh, the summary of theories and the issues of development. Um, each theory has its own uh, set of whether it's continuity or discontinuity, as in uh, if it has goes through stages, if the development goes through stages, or it's just spread, it just kind of goes through periods. Um, the theories there is psychoanalytic. Cognitive, behavioral, and social cognitive, ethological, and ecological. Psychoanalytical theories. Psychoanalytical theorists believe that human behavior is predetermined and is heavily colored by emotion and feelings. Freud and Erickson both believe that early experiences, especially with parents and guardians, help shape how a child develops, and they would take that well into adulthood. Unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth in uglier ways. And that was by Sigmund Freud. Freud's Psychosexual Theory. Sigmund Freud developed the psychoanalysis technique. This technique helped him convince, helped convince him that early life experiences affected adulthood. Um, he believed that from birth, humans had to go through five stages of development. And those stages were oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. Freud's theory was highly criticized due to the sexual basis of it, um, especially when it came to children. You know, when you think of children, you don't think of them as sexual, um, normal people, rather. I don't think of them in sexual manner, and so associating that with children was a little, um, was a little, um, what do you call it? Uh, it was a little weird to put it in the Uh, Fruity and Stages. These are the stages he had. Um, the first stage was the oral stage. Uh, this was from birth to 18 months. This is the mouth was the pe pleasure zone. This is because uh, children or babies uh, like things in their mouth. Uh, when it comes to teething, uh, especially nursing, nursing moms. I'm a nursing mom to a two-year-old almost. But uh, it's the suckling. That's that first instinct of of babies is the suckle. The second stage uh, was the anal stage. It focused on the anus, and that was from about 18 months to three years old. And this is the time when uh, toddlers are learning how to use the potty. So potty training. Um, it also just allows them to kind of get a grip on the uh, holding on to their bodily functions. That that was a big part in, in this stage. The phallic stage focused on the genitals. This is where the development of the daddy's girl or the mama's bull a that phase. The latency stage was um, where the children repressed their sexual interests and this was from 
six years old till puberty. Um, this is in the phase of cooties. So boys have cooties or girls have cooties. Um, the, the last stage was the genital stage. This was sexual relationships. And this was from puberty onward well into adulthood. Um, these are what you want intimate relationships with people. You're um, expressing yourself, your sexuality. The more you know yourself, the more patient you have for what you see in others. Eric Erickson. Erickson had eight stages. His first stage was trust versus mistrust. And this was his first psychosocial stage. Um, it occurred during the first year of life and involved mostly the parents and the caregivers because, you know, they care for the, the baby. Uh, trust is gained with pleasantries and providing necessities of life such as food and water. And that's where they associate trust. Uh, mistrust was when those weren't being, those, you know, those necessities weren't being met. Autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is from age one to three. And toddlers are beginning to learn that they are their own person and that they have will. Uh, excessive punishment could lead to shame and doubt. And that's really with anyone, you know. It goes into adulthood. Adulthood. Uh, initiative versus guilt. And this is preschool years, three to five. Uh, this is where interactions from the outside world can help teach, us, um, teach them lessons, um, as well as having a sense of guilt if they're not learned, those lessons aren't learned right away. Industry versus inferiority. And that's age six until puberty. And it develops um, where children spend time um, learning and um, gaining intellectual skills and just knowledge that will uh, grow with them. Identity versus confusion. Now from your 10s to 20s, the adolescent, adolescent age, uh, they would develop their sexual identity. And this identity uh, can be a bit of a crisis um, because we all went through it. I believe, you know, a, a lot of, you know, this is a crucial time trying to learn who you are and how you fit into society. Um, then there is the intimacy versus isolation. And this is... Um, I'm sorry, this is between ages uh, 20s and 30s, and this is when you're forming intimate relationships with people. Isolation can happen if those unions are not formed, or they are formed badly. The seventh stage is uh, going into adulthood. Um, it's perfect it's to define or stagnation is settled with the feelings of rejection. The final stage is integrity versus despair. Um, this is the eighth and final stage, and experienced late into adulthood and a reflection. Uh, it's a reflection on life and feeling if you succeeded in what you wanted to do in life, or if you just kind of let it go by. Okay, uh, cognitive theory. And this is the emphasis on conscious self and development of critical um, complex thinking. What we see changes what we know. What we know changes what we know. Um, Jean Piaget. Uh, he had four stages, the sensory motor stage, which was from birth to two years old, the pre-operational stage, two to seven, the concrete operational stage, seven to 11, and the formal operational stage, 11 years to adulthood.
the non-stage development. This is where it, it doesn't continually go. It's just in periods. Uh, the Gosky Sociocultural Theory. Uh, he believes that in social interaction and culture play a huge role in cognitive development. And so it was learned through society like language, memory strategies, and mathematical systems. Robert Siegler uh, was focused, he had the information process theory. Uh, he strongly believed in information processing that children encoded, represented, and perceived information via thought. Uh, his importance was on the mycogenetic method uh, that children understanding what children knew and the cognitive processes involved in the knowledge behavior and social cognitive theory this is B.F. Skinner and Albert Landora B.F. Skinner uh, he developed operative conditioning that said that the probability of behavior being repeated was based on the reaction. So let's say if a child did something awesome and got ice cream, they're probably going to do that behavior that caused them to get that ice cream again. Whereas if they were reprimanded and sent to the corner, it could help hinder them from doing that same, you know, behavior again. Um, Albert Bredera, uh he believed in social cognitive theory. He it emphasized that the process was developed through the environment and the behavior that one has saw, you know, observational learning. Cool theory. Behavior is governed by biology and it ties to evolution. dog is as lasting as the ties of this earth ever, and can ever be. And that was Conrad Lorenz. Now Conrad Lorenz, he uh, did a gray lag geese research. Um, he produced the conclusion that imprinting was instinctual behavior. That these geese latched onto the first object moving object that they saw. So they didn't see their mother, um, but rather they didn't see the geese mother. They saw Lorenz as their mother because that's who was, was that was their first sight. Um, he believed that imprinting had a very crucial time period. And so once that time period lapse was over, you know, it, it can never be recovered. So, imprinting. Uh, the ecological theory, ecological theory, excuse me. Child needs at least one adult who is rationally crazy about him or her. Yuri Bronfen Brenner. I'm sorry, this is quite long. And Bronfen Brenner's ecological theory had five systems in that impacted how a child developed. Um, it was based on the environment and the surrounding. It was the microsystem, the mesosystem, ecosystem, macrosystem, and chronosystem. And so all of these all of these um, systems had an impact and uh, it was their surrounding. That was the big thing. So thank you everyone.